Peace, family. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all, look, we are at 720 subscribers. I am so excited. That Mighty 344 is pulling up the rear. Do you hear me? And the Mighty 344, you that's my new subscribers. You are a part of the family, and you are helping us to pull up the rear by getting to that 1,000 subscriber mark by June right and so and also if there would be no 344 if it was if it weren't for my day ones okay I mean I'm talking sister lock videos garden like my day one so I really appreciate you as well y'all we have 280 left and I know we're gonna get there so I'm grateful to all of my subscribers and I am also grateful for the new subscribers that's coming to the family look y'all I'm ready to go live. I'm ready to start going live like from my phone anywhere because I can't go, look y'all, I cannot go live if I'm not at a thousand subscribers. I would have to go live like on my laptop and that is not mobile. I wanna go live in the forest. I wanna go live all over Kenya, right? And so I want to be able to go live y'all so we can talk. So we can have some interaction, okay? So I know we're gonna get to that um, 1,000 mark by June. I feel it, and again, I am so grateful for all of you guys, okay? Now, some of you have asked me questions in the comments, and I wanted to come out to answer your questions. So this video is gonna pretty gonna pretty much be like a, a Q and A, right? Now, if you have questions that you want me to address, y'all drop your questions in the comments. And y'all, I be reading these comments. Y'all know I be reading them because I be responding to y'all. <laughs> so drop your questions in the comments. I will, e I will either respond or I'll do a live video on it, okay? So this is a Q and A. So let me, let's go over some of the questions um, that you guys asked, okay? So one question is, why did you choose Africa? Why did you choose Africa? Okay, so look, y'all know as African Americans, we are born knowing that we are from Africa, right? And many of us, we have we live with this void, but we don't really understand what that void is, right? Now, I always have to give the disclaimer, not everybody, right? But most of us, we have this void and we don't quite understand what that void is. Um, we're born knowing that we're from Africa. And so for me, I never really felt fully accepted in America. As an African-American woman, I've never felt fully accepted. And there's always, there's always been like that void there, right? And so Africa, I don't know if I'm choosing Africa as much as Africa has chosen me, okay? And so it's having that longing and that desire to connect back to the motherland, to connect back to a place where I'm able to call home. Yes, I'm born in America. Yes, I'm raised in America. But there's always that that void that is there. Um, we deal we dealt with we deal with racism, segregation. We have dealt with so much racial injustice. Y'all, listen. After 400 years, how much more are we just going to stay there and fight? When there's nothing significantly that's being done, right? And so. Instead of me staying there fighting and living in trauma, I decided to follow that pool, right? Some of you may call it spirit, um, whatever it is, right? I ha it's, it's a longing that I've had. And the longing is for Africa, right? And so, so just to go back a little bit, um, this experience, um, has been very healing and life changing for me. When the reason when I when I left America and I came to Africa, as soon as I stepped off the plane, I went from being the minority to the majority just like that. Just like that, I went from being the minority to the majority. See, there's a sea of black people here. 
Everybody is black. The president is black. The parliament is black. The airline was black. The pilot is black. The the people who work at the airport, they're black. The bank, people working at the bank, they're black. Blackity black, black, black. A sea of beautiful black people. And everywhere I turn, I see people who look just like me. And it feels like home. Because it is home. And so I chose Africa because I had a, a pull towards Africa, right? And so when I had the pull towards Africa, y'all, this didn't start like overnight. I started researching back in 2012 and I ran across a young lady's video. Her name is Caitlin and the name of her channel, her channel is Afro-American living in Africa. And I can remember days just looking at her channel. And within myself, I always felt like, man, I would love to do that. But then there was also this fear that said, you ain't gonna be able to do it. Mm -mm. You can't do that, right? And so I just started researching and looking. And I, I'm telling you, she is a pioneer when it when um, our modern day pioneer I should say when um, when we talk about returning back to Africa and moving to Africa because it was through her videos that I was able to see that there was more to Africa than what we have been shown on television Africa was more than you know jungle and poor children and you know the the, the late light late night commercials we would see right about the, with the children with the flies in their eyes and that sort of thing so when I was exposed to Caitlin like that I would say that that's when the wheels really started turning okay now living in Africa is not my first time living abroad I did live in Germany but I've always had that feeling since Germany really that feeling that I wouldn't live in America you know until retirement I always knew that I would probably leave but that pull to Africa like I believe that God led me to Caitlin's videos and that just kind of started the wheels right so that was like maybe around 2012 life went on and so um fast forward to maybe 2015 my sister-in-law had a friend. Wait, let me say this first. I don't know if y'all family is like this, right? So with family, here we are trying to, you know, we always try to um, talk about like family trips. You know, we should do something as a family. We should go somewhere as a family, right? So everybody want to go on a cruise or Jamaica, right? And I'm like, let's go to Africa. And they look at that and be like, girl, we ain't going to no Africa. We not going to no Africa. That is too far. We not going to Africa. So when it comes to Africa, in my family, I have always been the Lone Ranger, y'all. I have always been the Lone Ranger. And so, um, so around 2015, my sister-in-law, she already kind of knew that I had been talking about Africa quite a bit. And so she had a friend whose fiance um, sponsored trips, you know, for Africa. I don't know, well, organized trips, I should say. And so we, um, she wind up, she introduced us and they had a trip coming up to South Africa. And I was like, I got to go. I was so excited because she was like, we have a trip coming up. Now at that time, I wasn't a therapist or anything, y'all. So I was working, I was working at the hospital. I was working overtime. I was taking people's call because I worked in um, in case management as a social as a social worker. So I was taking people's calls. I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was hustling. I'm like, look, I'm going to Africa. So I did whatever I, I could to, to go to Africa. When I tell you, um, when it came time to get on that plane, look, I had money. I was like, it was nothing wasn't charged on no credit card. Like I was hustling. So anyway, so we went to South Africa. I had the um, the opportunity to go. We went to Cape Town, Durban, and Johannesburg. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all when I got when we got there, it did. If when you hear people talk about it's just a feeling, like, because Africa is a vibe. Africa is a vibe. You ever seen somebody 
that um, that would do a video and they, they're in Africa and when they're showing you and they're like, you know, this place is so beautiful and the buildings look like it's just falling apart in the background and the person is like, this place is beautiful. And I'm saying this to say is, it's not just what you see with your physical eye. It's a feeling. Africa is a vibe. It's a feeling. It's it's a connection. It's home. Africa is home. We have 54 countries to choose from. That's not even counting Israel. Because the Middle East is really technically on the continent of Africa. Okay? So, yeah. It's a vibe. So when we got here, and we were in we were in South Africa rather, and so I thought it was beautiful. Um, they didn't have all the cultural stuff that I was expecting to see. That's most you see a lot of that in West Africa. I'm not saying um, South Africa don't have culture because they do, right? But remember, it was a two week vacation, so I did I wasn't there long enough to hit up the spots where you can see all of those things, right? Going up on Table Mountain was just absolutely beautiful. Going to Mama Africa Restaurant in Cape Town was absolutely beautiful. But y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, Johannesburg was the last stop when, and you know, before coming to, before coming, um, well, going to America. So when the plane took off in Johannesburg, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking out the window. Y'all, tears just started rolling down my face. Because it's like I'm leaving home. It's like I'm leaving home. Like that void that has always been there, there was a temporary fulfillment. I was fulfilled for two weeks. Because I was connected back to home. Y'all, it's, Africa is just not, it's spiritual, it's energy, it's, like, I just, you really, you have to try to explain it for yourself when you come, right? And so, but Johannesburg, it was, it was something about Johannesburg. And when that plane took off, I got to come back. Even my daughter was like, Mama, I can see you going back in two years. You're going to move to Africa in two years. My daughter said that. And at the time, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew I was I was definitely going to come back to this continent. So, of course, fast forward, life go on. I didn't sit in the corner. I didn't say, you know, oh, I got to go now. I got to go now. You know, I didn't create a whole bunch of negative energy within myself about leaving. But I allow life to evolve in front of me. And I just continue to live life, right? But in my heart, there was a desire inside of me that pulsated. And I was like, I'm going, to, I know I'm going to Africa. It was just that, it's that, it's just a deep desire, right? You know, it talks about how God, the Bible talks about how God gives you the desires of your heart. God does, y'all. Regardless of which, what, what your, your religious beliefs are, whether you say God, the universe, or you don't believe in anything at all, there's just something, sometimes you feel this deep desire. And that desire is there for a reason, because we all don't have the same desire, right? But it's there for a reason. And once we become in alignment, it manifests. So anyway, I don't want to get off into all of that. But so I've all, I, I just kept it in my heart. So time went on, you know, I'm a therapist. Um, I opened up my, um, my private practice. And so um, I had moved to a new office. Now, meanwhile, I'm still researching. Don't know how I'm gonna get here, but I'm still researching, right? And at this time, my daughter, she's researching. 2000, you know, well, really, I had I never really stopped since Caitlin, right? So I'm just researching. So of course, you got all these other new YouTubers popping up, you know, so, you know, more and more content to kind of start looking at, exploring, and that sort of thing. So, 
Um, so I had just opened, moved to a different office, opened up my practice, and opened up a new, I, I was at a new location, I should say. My practice was already over, but I was at a new location. So it was there about eight months and COVID hit. Because in my mind, I'm like, maybe I have to open up a group practice and I'll be able to travel and see a couple of people online. Because remember, telehealth, it was there, but it wasn't as big as, as it is now. So I didn't, so I just gave myself a five-year goal, right? So 2019, I had a five-year goal to come to Africa, right? So now, fast 2020, COVID hit. I had just, I had a life coach that had came on board, like we was about to do this thing, but COVID hit and I had to close my office. Uh, when I tell you, I cried for about two seconds. It was like, <gasps> wait, <laughs> I can go to Africa because I had to move everybody online. So I already had a job on my laptop. And I was like, I can go to Africa, right? And so when I, and so I did my research and, um, and I can tell y'all a little bit more about why Kenya, right? But the, but the question was, why did I choose Africa? And I chose Africa because there was a, um, there was a connection. I just had a connection because everybody's not meant to come to Africa. It's wherever you feel, wherever you feel like you're drawn to or where you're connected, right? And so, um, so that's why I chose Africa. Um, and then I'm telling you to go, when I got to Kenya, as soon as I stepped off the plane, I can't stress that enough. I went from a minority to the majority, just like that. You would be amazed, that, that feeling, like can you imagine existing in the world without worrying about racism? Can you imagine being in a space where racism is not even an issue? And you're not looking at everything through the lenses of racism. It's the energy, it's a vibe, right? So, so that's why I chose Africa. And again, I was just over America, all the racial injustice, all of that, like, it just, I was not happy. I wasn't happy. And when you are, when you are in a space, and I have not been like happy for many years. So, but, so when you're in the space like that, you have to change your environment because your environment, it affects your mood. Right? So anyway, so that was that question. Why I chose Africa? Okay. How did you prepare yourself and family for this move abroad? Okay. So I didn't really have to do a lot of preparation for my family because my youngest, I have two adult daughters. So my youngest daughter, again, she's, she had started researching herself, right? And the plan was for me to come and then she would come later. And so, um... And we're, you know, we're still, you know, upholding that plan, making preparations for that. My oldest daughter, you know, she's coming to visit, so she doesn't know yet if she wants to move to Africa. And so, as for, but I, although it wasn't a lot of preparation internally when I was planning and um, organizing and getting everything together, I did have the concern of abandoning my children and not being there, right? So that was a, con a concern. And so I, they had to kind of, I got some extra, you know, support and encouragement, you know, where they, where they said, you know, you've raised us, mama, we got this, you know, you go, go do it. You know, we, we got this, you gonna, we, we support you. And so having the support of family, is um is so important it doesn't mean that they don't my family don't miss me but if i don't i really just don't have um some of the challenges that people may have as it relates to their families um as far as my brothers and my mom and you know and all of that look they don't they've been here before like they they have watched me at 19 years old never being on the airplane moving to germany right with the five month old baby. So it's, it's not quite out of the norm for them because they've known me not to live live in my hometown. 
I was gone for 22 years um, living in different states until I moved back home to New Orleans and I was there for maybe 10 years and then I, you know, then I left again. So it's nothing, um, they know me. And then I don't, and then for me, I'm the type of person that marched to the beat of my own drum. So my, my family know, like, if I if I put my mind to something, I say I want, they know I'm just gonna do it. Like, you know, they know I'm gonna do it. And so there's technology and there's an airplane. And so when I left the United States, there was no brick wall that closed behind me saying that I couldn't go back, right? And so, you know, I go home to visit. I, um, I talk to my daughters every day, every other day, you know, my sister-in-law, you know, my, I, I keep up my technology, there's technology, y'all, like, so you do get to talk, I don't, I know everything that's going on, I know the news, I have apps on my phone, like, so, I'm in contact, you know, with my family, I know what's going on at, and, you know, at home, I always say New Orleans is my country, New Orleans is my country, so I know what's going on in New Orleans, like, right, so you have social media, I have the, the local news app, WDSU. You know, sometimes I want to turn that off because it seems like every day I, I'm getting an alert about somebody got killed and shot and whatever. So so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty up on everything that happens at home. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do a video so that people can know, like, just because you're not living in America, it doesn't mean that you don't have access to everything. I watch a little, I watch the I watch TV there. I keep up with all those shows. Like, technology, y'all. Technology. So, um, and, and again, what's very important is I've marched to the beat of my own drum. Now, if you are the type of person where your family um, kind of control your decisions and you are affected by the opinions of other people, you really need to work through that before you um, move abroad. And I help people with that. So I'm also, again, I'm a licensed therapist. I'm a life, um, life coach. And I also um, provide consultations for people who's preparing to move abroad. And it's not just helping you about, talk to you about passports and that sort of thing, but it's also to help you to prepare emotionally and mentally and to address those issues, especially if you're the type of person that's heavily influenced by the opinions of other people. You know, some people are born in families like that, where families are a little bit more com controlling and have, you know, more of an influence, right? So that might be a little difficult. So anyway, so that's how I prepared the family. It was a much preparation. Now, and also some people who have shared custody with their children's father, there's some extra things that you may have to do because you need the father to give permission for you to take the, ch the child out of the country. So there's other things. So this, this, I'm only talking about my experience, but... There are so many different experiences that you guys um, may have, right? That you need to talk to somebody to work through, right? To deal with the custody stuff, developing the plan, you know, what type of job you're going to do. Are you able to do it? Which you are. Um, but anyway, so the other question is, are you a part of a network or support group? of other abroad Americans. Yes. So listen, when you start researching and all that, you know, you will run across, there's a lot of groups on Facebook of other African Americans and not just African Americans, people, um, the African diaspora, you know, from all over, right? That live abroad. And, but, but we're talking about African Americans. That's my experience. But Mo there's a lot of us. We're all over the place. So you can go to Facebook groups like Black Sid, Black Americans Who Left America. There's Black Expats all over the world. Um, black Expats in Kenya. So wherever you're trying to move to, you can search groups for that, right? I don't just do expats, which I am a part of some of just the regular expats, but that's white people. Black. I like to talk to people. I, I think with for this journey, you want to be able to identify with the people. So... Um, let's just say if you want to move to Mexico, go to Facebook and do black, um, type in black expats in Mexico and see what show up. But we're all over the world, y'all. There's black people in, um, black people in Portugal, black people in Turkey, Korea, Mexico, um, Spain, Italy, like everywhere, several countries, on, um, in Africa, like y'all, we are everywhere. So 
So um, being a part of a group or not officially, but there are a network of people. And then wherever you're moving to, find your black expat community. Because I, I promise you, there's other black people who have left America that you can connect with. So we do have black expats here in Kenya. We have a WhatsApp. You, you can connect a, um, with a lot of those people on um, WhatsApp. You know, be added to some of the WhatsApp groups, um, Facebook groups, YouTube, go to YouTube, right? But as far as the connection, like I'm here and I'm a, I'm a part of the expats in um, Black expats in Kenya, and um, I'm gonna interview her, so I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm not gonna talk too much about it right now because I do want to interview her. But um, she helped me get on the ground and get moving and had everything set up for me when I got here. So you, so it depends on where you're moving to, right? And you can connect with people who have left the United States and who can help you and give you the resources that you need. Look, if you, um, if you are in need of coaching or trying to prepare to move abroad, my link, you can hit up my, um, my link in the box. I help people to prepare to move abroad. Um, and uh, just to help you to develop your own plan. You may not want to come here, but I help you to even determine where you want to go and what, which country may be the right fit for you, right? So anyway, y'all, those are the questions that I'm answering during this video. If you, um, if you have questions, please um, hit me up in the comments and I will either respond to you in the comments or come out and do a video on it. Um, please like and subscribe. I know we're going to get to this 1000 by June so that we can start going live. So I love y'all so much. Peace. I'm out. Mm -hmm. <laughs>